Hello, folks. Welcome to Prophecy USA, a Bible study podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. I'm here with my wife, Karen. Welcome back. And uh, today we're continuing our TV sneak preview of our new TV episodes uh, that we've not even aired yet, Karen. I know. And last week we were in Washington and we began it with Washington. This week we're going to begin it in the same studio that the, that the TV program is. And we just added a little bit because of certain things that have, have happened in the last week or two that we wanted to add in the Bible study. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also wanted to let you know that we have some new promotional ads encouraging you to use our study guide kits for Sunday school classes, Bible studies, home study groups. It's a really economical way to get our books and to get our message out there. Yes, um, folks, we've had a lot of people, uh, especially those of you that are dedicated weekly to our Bible study podcast, we're trying to get this message out through TV, through social media. And you might have friends, you might have people in your church, you might teach Sunday school at your church. This word is not our word. This is the word of God. And people need to know where we are on God's prophetic time clock. So sometimes they will not accept the teaching on television or from somebody that they don't know. But if you have a Sunday school class or anything like that, a Bible study, and you want to teach this, we have set this up so that you can start teaching it. You can start repeating everything that what we're saying and go through the scriptures. And when people read the Bible, you have to realize something. Once they read scripture, the Holy Spirit takes over. You do not have to convince people. You're listening to us now, and we literally have thousands of people that are writing us. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have an email here from Rebecca. If you don't mind, I'd like to read it. She actually ordered oh. the 10 set. Okay. So she said, okay. Hi, it's Rebecca. I've ordered several books before and have given them to friends and relatives. I heard your recent offer for 10 books and guides, and I'd like to accept the offer. Please let me know how to do this. I'm 83, my friend Jane 73, and together we've taught the Bible and children's ministry for many years. Currently, I teach w women in the local jail and find your messages so useful in helping to explain God's plan of salvation for everybody. We are so blessed by your weekly podcast. We meet once a week and discuss your message and study the Bible. We are so blessed with the prophetic revelation you have revealed from God's word. Keep looking up. He's coming soon. God bless. He's coming soon, folks. Um, thank you, Rebecca. I didn't know you were going to read that. Um, but when you know something and you know that something's coming and you don't warn others, you are responsible for that. Um, like there, there's a light coming down the track and it's a freight train, folks. And when this thing comes down and when Bible, and it's not because I said it, but what we have shown you in scripture, this thing is coming. Judgment is not coming to America. It has begun. We're praying for a revival. We're praying for a move of God. We're praying for signs and wonders. Um, we're, we're, we're in agreement with our friends in the States that want to see the States turn around. We love America. But there's an end of the line here that's coming. And it doesn't matter what political party is in, in control. It's, it's, it, what matters is the whole culture where the whole culture is. And we have fulfilled all 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great. And now we've fulfilled another four that you're going to find in our TV. And we've, we've taught this in our, um, since, um, since November 3rd of 2020. We've had four more major signs of a nation that's coming under the curse uh, of God because she's walked away from God. And these are birth pains of what's coming. The, the borders, what happened in Afghanistan, people are sitting that don't know scripture and they're going, what in the world is going on? If you take 
our study guides and just break down a 12 week. In fact, we just had uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, Steve Heifner, the, the assistant pastor, a church of 13,000 people and he called me and he said, we want, we want to do a study. And they, they bought 60 books and 60 study guides for their men's fellowship. And the men's fellowship there, uh, they're all into prophecy and they're listening to different prophetic ministries. But he said, the guys absolutely loved what they learned out of the, the, the teaching because it made the Bible come alive. We're living in the last days and what happens in America is all in scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're sitting there and you're excited about the second coming of Christ and you know other people that don't know, now, that doesn't mean you um, cast your pearls before swine because I was, at, I was at the airport the other day and there were some guys in my hangar and they're non-believers and they started, they asked me where I'd been and I said I was at Christians United for Israel and I started explaining what we were doing and they laughed in my face and they were just laughing at And you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, people that laugh right in your face. Well, I'm not saying to go to those people, but I'm saying to go to those people that you love that are believers and, and, and start a Bible study course or whatever you want because we're in the end times. And, um, you know, the, the new progressive left have an incredible ilk against Bible, the, the biblical moral protocol. And uh, they have great intellectual pursuits uh, with regards to science, that's what we're going to talk about today, and they totally dismiss scripture. Uh, but no matter how brilliant you are, how intellectual you think you are, um, there's coming a day that, that is a fact, and it says in Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto men to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now last week, Karen, uh, we posted on the internet uh, that my mother passed away and she was 99 years old and uh, she really wanted to go. She wanted to go and be, be with my dad and she really wasn't doing very well. No, she was quite... Uh, in the last stages of congestive heart failure, so was unable to be very mobile. Yes. So Karen and I were there, and um, we were ministering to her, and she, she went into a coma, and we read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Yes. And as we read that, her heart stopped, and she took her last breath, and she, le and she went. And, and the day before, she said, you know, Rick, I, I just want to get out of this body. I want to go be with your dad. I want to see your twin sister. I had a twin sister that passed away. She says, I want to see your oldest brother that I never met. He died. He was a stillborn. Mm -hmm. And um, Karen, your parents are there in heaven. Yes. And I have friends that are in heaven. And there's no fear for us. This is supernatural. There is no fear of death for those who have been washed in the blood. No. And there should be no fear of what's happening today in Bible prophecy. But the traditional prophecy teachers are not warning us that America's in scripture. And I don't know exactly why I have my, my feelings, but um, we're not afraid that you're going to walk away or not support us because we say something that brings fear. Our job is to deliver a word so that you can prepare yourself for the greatest exodus in the history uh, of scripture. And Which, it's exciting. And it's exciting. So um, the last thing my mom said to me, she says, Rick, this is the last time you're going to see me. And I was standing in the hallway. And she said, uh, now this is the last time you're going to see me. Uh, so bye-bye. 
and I'll see you up in heaven with dad. And that's the last thing my mother said. And I love you. And I love you. And I love you. <laughs> Don't forget, I love you. And I said to her, you know, four years previous, my father had died. And I read to him the same Psalms. Uh, Psalm 23. And when I got to the point where it said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my, hand, my dad's hand started shaking. Now, he was in a coma. But they can still hear you. That's right. And I said, Dad, don't be afraid. I'm going to take real good care of Mom. Don't worry about Mom. I'm going to, you just go with Jesus. And he just took his last breath and up he went. <laughs> so with, when my mom was conscious, I said, don't you... Don't you forget to tell dad once you get up there that I took good care of you, mom. And she laughed. She goes, I'm going to tell dad you took good care of me, Rick. Yes. So now, now this is when you're, you're, the woman that gives birth to you is passing away. And there was, there was grief. But folks, we have an unbelievable peace that passes understanding that we can have. And, and in these troubled times that we're living in, we need to walk in that peace. Um, so uh, it says in, in Isaiah 26, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Mm -hmm. And you know, my friend... Two years ago, Tony, yes, um, my friend passed away, and I wasn't there when he passed away. But t three days before, he passed away. He was laying in bed. He had cancer, and he said, "Rick, I I, I want to go." He said, on "My on my body, I he was down to ninety pounds or something." He says, "I I definitely want to go." You know, there's there's an appointed time for all of us. There's an appointed time unto death for mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to Tony, now we, we had, were partners in an airplane. It's called a Malibu. And he owned half and I owned half. And we would work on it at, at the hangar. And he was my good buddy. But I said, Tony, have you got everything straightened out? You're, you're ready to go? He says, yeah. And I says, well, now listen, Tony, when you get up there, you get that hanger good and clean up there. Because when I come, I'm bringing the Malibu. And Tony looked at me and we laughed and we laughed. And here we are facing death, but there's no fear. Mm -hmm. And here we are in a nation called Babylon the Great, a nation that's met, that's fulfilled 53 descriptions in scripture. And people don't know about it. People won't even breathe about America in the Bible. Folks, you have the opportunity to share with others, even if it's just to send books or whatever out. Or even share our podcasts on your Facebook page. Uh, but you know, in 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 53, it says, um, this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. And then it says, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You know, it's, it's amazing when you s sit in a room with somebody that you love and you watch them pass away. And there's a peace that passes understanding when believers leave. It says that the death of a saint is precious in the eyes of the Lord because he brings him in. Yes. And so that's what we want you to walk in. We want you to walk in that peace. And it says that, that same verse when it says, death, where is thy sting or grave, where is thy victory? It says, therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So this is the work. And, and if you feel so led by the Holy Spirit to help us in our work and do a Bible study or share the books, um, we're giving you that opportunity. And, and uh, this, this next program that we're going to talk about, you know, we. Secular humanists and the global elites, 
they believe that science, they've got all the answers. Mm -hmm. They're going to rule the world with their science. And they can, they can solve climate change and they can solve starvation. Well, they're, they're, the way they're going to sell, starve, uh, solve starvation is they're going to kill a bunch of people. That's not solving anything. But it's on the move. The World Economic Forum, the whole global New World Order, these people are serious. And so are we. But they're not going to achieve their goal until the seventh of eight providential nations are destroyed in one hour. And that's the United States of America, folks. A nuclear judgment is coming to the United States of America. It's all in this book. And if anyone can prove me wrong, I'm quitting this ministry tomorrow. But I have to share this with people and warn you. We're giving you that same opportunity. But this thing is coming, believe me. So um, the science that they're talking about, this particular show is entitled, uh, God Laughs at the Science that Opposes Him. Folks, we know where we go after we die. But these people that follow the science, they haven't got a clue. But this book, this book, science does not oppose it. And this book does not oppose science. In fact, science embraces this book. And in the next 15 minutes, you're going to learn how science confirms all the supernatural things that Jesus did. Jesus knew about molecules and atoms. He was the son of God. He knew that when he spoke, certain things had to listen to him. Mm -hmm. And he controlled everything. Now, you and I believe that, but these people don't. And most of you believe this because you've had a personal encounter with Christ at some time in your life. You are a believer, and so are we. So on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this next TV series, this next show. It's number 54, mm -hmm. and I think it's entitled, When Science Opposes God, He Laughs. God just laughs at all of these people who are opposing his book and they say, follow the science. What you need to do is follow the money and you'll find out the agenda behind their science. <laughs> That's true. Basically. Yes. So anyway, uh, Chris is going to edit this in now. Our editor is going to edit this into the podcast and we're going to go into the same studio only it's going to be a TV and, and there'll be an advertisement in there for our new book as well as an advertisement for the um, study guides and, um, and the study guide that. kits. And the study guide kit, mm -hmm. the kits that we're offering. But anyway, we thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy this new sneak preview. And um, we want you to know that we care about you, we love you. And we pray that our ministry will be a blessing to you and to your family. And we thank you so much for your encouragement. We thank you for your questions that you email. And we also thank you so much for your financial blessings. Without you, we couldn't do what we're doing. Yes, thank you so much for that. So on that note, with no further ado, we take you to our Canadian studio right here <laughs> that we recorded four weeks ago. And you'll see this on television probably in the next month, but we're giving you, our partners, a sneak preview, and you are there. Hello, my name is Rick Pearson, and welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, we hear the phrase today from politicians that they're following the science, but with regards to the Bible, is it possible that they might have the cart before the horse? Stay tuned, you're gonna be amazed at what we have to teach today. Welcome back, folks. 
You know, for those of you new to our program, we'd like to encourage you to join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for a Bible study podcast with live chat, answering many of the questions our viewers have. And you can join us at our website, or you can send us your email address, and we'll be sure to send you our weekly link for that particular Bible study podcast. You know, when I was a child, I sat in Sunday school classes, and I was amazed by the miracles that are documented in Scripture. The Bible says that Jesus walked on the water, He healed the sick, raised the dead, He opened blinded eyes, He cast out devils, and even the wind obeyed His voice. However, I was also taught that the day of miracles was over. God did that through Jesus and through His disciples, so they told me, in order to get the world's attention to confirm that Jesus had actually been sent by God. It confirmed to His generation that he was God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. His disciples declared that even the wind obeyed his voice. Now, after Jesus died and rose from the dead and then departed, God continued working through his disciples, which Mark later wrote, that God worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. However, somewhere along the line, after that last disciple passed away, John, theologians got the idea that the day of miracles was over, that God no longer wanted to do signs and miracles and wonders. Apparently, theologians decided that signs and wonders and miracles were no longer necessary. But sickness still occurs, blindness still occurs, Infirmities still occur. And where are those devils that Jesus cast out? Are they not still here? Is it possible that in our modern theology and intellectual interpretation, we've reached a position similar to the sons of Sceva, who when actually confronting evil, the demons literally spoke and said, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? Listen to this, and we'll be right back. The Bible talks about two spiritual kingdoms that are presently at war on this planet. God's kingdom has existed forever, but Satan's kingdom had a starting point. To find this starting point, we must look at several passages of Scripture that give us a general concept of the origin of Satan and his kingdom. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub, I have set thee so. According to Webster's Dictionary, the name Lucifer means light-bearing covered in precious jewels and created with musical instruments in him. Lucifer must have been an awesome sight. As the glory of God shone into Lucifer, he reflected this glory with his body. His music and his brilliance were combined for the purpose of honoring the Father who had created him. It's interesting to note that just as the Bible declares that Babylon has fallen, has fallen, and become the habitation of devils, so it was with Lucifer. Isaiah described Lucifer's fall from the kingdom of light when Lucifer's pride had gotten the best of him. It was at this time that Lucifer set up his own kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. In these end times there are spiritual entities from the kingdom of darkness that are on assignment to come against the commandments of God. These spirits seek to control individuals, families, cities, states, and even nations in opposition to God's kingdom of light. 
They attempt to dominate man by putting thoughts into his mind that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. On the Isle of Patmos, John was told by an angel that Satan's plan for world control would be as follows. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. These ten kings, or what we might refer to as a new world order, will make war with the Lamb, and that war will be a war of words. Words of deception versus words of truth. Welcome back, folks. You know, today we hear the term in politics, follow the science. But perhaps we should be following the money in order to discern the agenda of those who are hiding behind what they call science. We might be better off to do that. We might be better off, in fact, to follow the agenda, follow the moral ethics of those in power, and you will find the root cause of their thinking. When secular humanism mocks believers, placing science above biblical scripture, the Bible says that the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with, his, with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. In unveiling the 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great, which America has already fulfilled, we find that Isaiah prophesied about Babylon, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Of course, Chaldeans in this verse refers to wanderers, astrologers, and demons. But Isaiah goes farther and he says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Harper's Bible Dictionary says that when it comes to the word wisdom, it's talking about technical skills, government protocol, and the pursuit of a lifestyle of proper ethical conduct. Webster's Dictionary says wisdom is a synonym for science. Harper's Bible Dictionary says that knowledge is a personal relationship along with intellectual understanding. It's the same word used in Genesis to describe the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So in rephrasing this verse in the modern vernacular, we could read thy technical skills, ethical conduct, and thy knowledge or personal relationship and understanding of good and evil, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. At that point, Good becomes evil, and evil becomes good. When you hear politicians say that they're following the science as a prelude to opposing those who follow their faith, it's the most telltale sign of a nation leaving godly principles based on the moral and ethical protocol the nation is exhibiting. Now, Lucifer said in his heart, I will be like God. Babylon says in her heart, I am and none else beside me. Lucifer looked at the giftings, the rubies, the jewels, and heard the sound of the music coming out of him and said, I don't need God. Babylon, in turn, looks at the technical skills, the science, and the wealth that God has given her instead of the God who gave her those things. The Bible says that those things pervert her, and she says, I don't need God. You know, the word perverted in this uh, text means corrupted thee. Those things have corrupted thee. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Science was not invented by man. It was discovered by man. Lucifer did not create his body, his rubies, his jewels. God did. But just as Lucifer looked at the gifts and started worshiping them, so Babylon looks at her gifts, forsakes God, who is the giver 
of all good gifts. So what does Scripture say about mankind when they make plans that don't include God? What does God think about the science that they cling to instead of clinging to the God who gave them the science? Stay tuned, folks. You'll be surprised to learn that science does not oppose Scripture. It literally embraces it. We'll be right back. History records that the greatest exodus in the Bible was led by Moses. But according to Scripture, another exodus is coming. It's bigger, better, and is beyond any other mystery that is contained in Scripture. But how does the United States of America play a pivotal role in this unfolding mystery? Prophecy USA is proud to present the latest book by Rick Pearson, The Coming Exodus Unveiling America's Future. This exciting and timely new book is coming soon. And now, when you send a gift of $35 or more plus shipping and handling, you will receive the book, The Coming Exodus Unveiling America's Future, as soon as it's available. Call today, 1-888-306-1759, or visit prophecyusa.org to be one of the first this October to unravel one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture. Welcome back, folks. We just learned that there are two kingdoms at war on this planet. One is a kingdom of lies, deception, and is steeped in human logic that claims to be following the science. However, that science always seems to have a money trail leading to a different agenda. And that agenda always quotes debatable facts. And most of the time, secular humanists who deny the existence of God try to use science as a way to disclaim God's existence. But the Bible has some insights that most of the scientific fact quoters won't discuss. Scripture says that God is a spirit, and when He created man, He breathed His spirit into man, and man became a living soul. However, Scripture also says that God is light. James 1.17 refers to God as the Father of lights. And when Jesus came, He told His disciples that He was the light of the world. John described heaven as a city that did not need the sun, for the glory of God is its illumination. From a very simplistic explanation, we all know that tiny particles called molecules make up every tangible object. According to scientific study, a single molecule can vibrate in various ways, and each of these different motions is called vibration mode. Molecules move or vibrate at different speeds within various things. When the molecules of a liquid get so cold that they slow down enough to hook onto each other, they form a solid crystal. In other words, the liquid molecules slow down into a solid form called ice. One scientific magazine explains other transformalities of liquid matter this way. If you heat a liquid like water up high enough, the molecules will move around so fast that they can't even hold on to each other at all. When this happens, all of the molecules go flying apart and become a gas, like when you boil water to make steam. The process of gas molecules leaving the liquid to go into gas is called evaporation. The opposite is called condensation. As the molecules of water move at different speeds, they cause a change in the appearance of that substance. We can observe the substance when the molecules move slowly in water or in ice, but they're invisible in the atmosphere when they're accelerated to a higher speed. Now also, according to scientific data, the speed of light particles is 186,000 miles per second. Since the metaphorical substance of light is used to describe God's spiritual substance, His Spirit theoretically 
moves at that speed. That speed is impossible for the human eye to see. However, when Moses stood in God's presence in front of the Father of lights, it stated that the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that, that his skin shone, and Moses had to put a veil upon his face. Since angels are ministering spirits, we cannot see them unless they slow down the molecular structure of their bodies and reveal their presence to us. Since we can only see in a three-dimensional plane of height, width, and depth, and within a certain molecular speed of molecules, it does not allow us to physically see into that realm or into that dimension of the spirit realm. The late Dr. Cho of Korea, in his book called The Invisible Realm of the Fourth Dimension, states that it's the invisible fourth dimension where all spiritual warfare takes place. In studying the theory of matter and antimatter, we have the same parallel. Matter is made up of particles, which are broken down into atoms, molecules, protons, and neutrons. However, instead of seeing matter as we explained above, this time we will look at it with the sensation of touch instead of sight. When molecules move slowly enough, as in the case of ice, we're unable to put our hands into it because the surface of that object is hard. When the molecules are sped up or accelerated, that matter or substance changes so that we can walk into it and right through it, as in the water in the, in the atmosphere. In the case of vapor, where the molecules are sped up even further, we actually live in it and breathe in those molecules. But how can we be certain that certain particles exist? We simply need to look at the science. So stay tuned, folks. You're going to be amazed at the scientific forensic evidence of the past, the present, and the future miracles that awaits those who faithfully follow the words of this amazing book that we call the Holy Bible. Be right back. Hello, folks. Karen and I would like to personally thank you, our prayer partners, and our monthly supporters, who are helping us spread God's word concerning America's role in Bible prophecy. In order to help you reach friends and other loved ones with this teaching, please listen to this very special message. In these end times, it is more important than ever to reach the lost. That's why Rick and Karen Pearson have assembled all of their teaching into this powerful study kit. For a gift of just $200 plus shipping and handling, Prophecy USA will send you a free study kit of five books, five study guides, and a DVD teaching aid discussing each chapter. Or for a gift of just $375 plus shipping and handling, you will receive a free study kit of 10 books, 10 study guides, and two DVD teaching aids. Call today at 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org to send your gift and begin sharing these important prophetic teachings. Welcome back, folks. We've been talking about the speed of molecules within all substances and how that speed can transform that substance from one mass to another, like ice to water or to vapor. One of the greatest mysteries in Scripture is the description of when Jesus suddenly appeared to his disciples when they were inside a house with the door shut. Luke 24 says, And as they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. But they were terrified and affrightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Now Jesus showed them his hands and his side to prove that he was not a ghost. Then in verse 42, it says that they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb, and he took it, and he did eat it before them. This person, Jesus, was the resurrected Jesus who appeared before them. He showed them his scars from his crucifixion, and even Thomas the doubter fell to his knees to worship the Savior. But
But how did Jesus suddenly appear in the midst of them? Is it possible that the kingdom of God inside Jesus, the spirit man, took dominion over the molecular structure of his body and accelerated it to the speed of light? And as his biological molecules accelerated to that speed, they took on the same antimatter substance as his spirit. And he could literally walk through the walls of the house. Once inside, Jesus slowed down the molecular structure of his body and he became visible to his disciples. This type of body is that which the bride of Christ will receive as she mysteriously is taken from this planet and will be the only generation not to experience death. In 2012, one of the world's most robust experiments took place in Geneva, Switzerland, with a 17-mile-long Hadron Collider, also known as an atom smasher. Now, at the end of their multi-billion dollar experiment, we read this. To the cheers and standing ovations, scientists at the world's biggest atom smasher claimed the discovery of a new subatomic particle on July 4, 2012 popularly calling it the God particle that helps explain what gives all matter in the universe size and shape. You know, science has finally unraveled the mystery that the Bible predicts. Behold, I show you a mystery. Not only have we unveiled who Babylon is, but we've also unveiled the science behind this verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is it possible that at the sound of that trumpet, the God particle inside each and every believer will instantaneously accelerate every molecule in your body to the speed of light. Time will be no more. The laws pertaining to the third dimension in which we presently live and see will be changed according to John. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We will attain the same resurrection body that Jesus Christ now has. Philippians 3 says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Perhaps one of the greatest mysteries yet to be fulfilled in Scripture is the event known as the catching away. Although many theologians have different views on the timing of the catching away, Few dismiss that it is a future event that is well documented in Scripture. It is an event that has not yet taken place. But as America fulfills her role in Bible prophecy, it will play a pivotal role in end time events. Paul said, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The mystery of the catching away, although not yet fulfilled, follows another mystery that we at Prophecy USA have been teaching for many years. This event known as the rapture will take place immediately before the marriage supper of the Lamb begins. However, according to scripture, that marriage will only take place after Mystery Babylon the Great has been destroyed by fire. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, Babylon the Great which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, 
and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. The only nation in the history of the world that has fulfilled all 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great is the United States of America. Babylon is no longer a mystery. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Folks, science does not oppose God nor the Bible. It merely answers the mysteries that have been hidden in Scripture since the Bible was written. There is nothing new under the sun. Jesus Christ is above all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Folks, science does not oppose the Bible. Science only embraces what the Bible has already taught us. But unfortunately, we're out of time, folks. This is Prophecy USA, and my name is Rick Pearson, and I'm reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive, and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom. Shalom.